Very good. Okay. Hi, everyone. We have Micah Parsons with us now. If you, uh, you have a question for Micah, please use the raise your hand function, and uh, I'll ask you to unmute, and you can ask Micah a question. We'll begin with uh, Jacob Infante, followed by Rich Scarcella, Audrey Snyder on deck. Hey, Micah. How you doing? I'm doing good. Good. Uh, so can you walk me through uh, – your decision to opt out of the 2020 season and what you've been doing uh, to kind of stay in shape and improve your game uh, in this pre-draft process. Cause obviously you put together an incredible pro day. So just speaking on uh, what you've been doing leading up to this process. Um, I just say that uh, I went to big 10 and then, you know, uh, they had an unknown on the season and, you know, with COVID spiking, I thought there was a chance of them, um, you know, canceling again, but honestly, I didn't want to come back with, I had to make a, my family made the decision that it was already too late and now I was already training. So I've just been training since September um, all the way up to now. And you know, I'm just glad that this whole training thing's done and I can finally relax and be with my family. So, um, yeah. We'll go to Rich Scarcella next, followed by Audrey Snyder, excuse me, and then uh, Matt Pachota. Micah, thank you, and, and uh, thanks for the time. How has training with Jason uh, helped you, and how have you helped him? And did you find yourself today trying to compete with him uh, and, and some of the numbers that you guys put up? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, obviously, I know me and Jason, we've been competing since freshman year. The day we both walked in, and the moment I saw he was a freak, I knew I could test him mentally, and I know he was new to the football, so, you know, um, I knew what I could bring out of him. So, obviously, I, I always love to keep up with Jay. And, you know, he PR'd on a lot of things. And I felt like I did really well on things I knew I was going to do well on. And, you know, uh, I think in a lot of categories, we was uh, pretty close. So, you know, I think he had the edge on the day. Um, but overall, I think, you know, we competed our butts off today and showed scouts why we're the most competitive duo in the country. Go to Audrey Snyder next, followed by Matt Pachota and Andre Monroe on deck. Hey, Micah, thanks for the time. Um, I'm sure a lot of teams are asking you this now, but how would you kind of state your case that you're a, you're a top five guy, top ten guy? What would you tell them? Why why are you? I just feel like I'm the most versatile player in this uh, class, uh, so I could play middle linebacker, I could play outside, and I could pass for So I don't think there's no place I can't play in a linebacker spot or whether it's Dean on the field. Uh, I utilize my skills, um, and I'm going to just make plays happen as I did at Penn State and, you know, uh, show these guys why uh, Penn State agreed the way we do. You know, we, we always do this. We show up in big-time games and big-time moments. So I don't think it's going to be anything less. Uh, we are trained for this. We'll go to Matt Pachota next, followed by Andre Monroe and Dan Wolkenstein on deck. Hey, Micah, this is Matt. Hey, uh, just speak to just your preparation process. Obviously, not having any games, you know, leading into, you know, the draft, getting ready for the upcoming NFL season. Just how, how do you prepare to get back into game shape and to show these, you know, scouts and the teams that you're ready to go? Um, you know, just keep training, not taking no days off. Um... Just keep getting after it. The only way to get in game shape is to actually play in games. And, you know, once I get down to OTAs and uh, mini camp, I'll be able to keep getting better and better in shape and playing the way that I, I was, was playing. So um, I think it's going to come over time, but I think by the season I'll be ready. All right. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Andre M Monroe next, followed by Dan Wolkenstein and Ryan John Parsons on deck. Good afternoon, Micah. It's the time of the year where, you know, mock drafts are being uploaded every single day. I'm just wondering, do you pay attention to those? And if so, uh, what kind what kind of has been your reaction to that? Um, I see them, but I don't really pay attention to them because at the end of the day, they're just going off their beliefs and what are things good. The only people's opinion that matter is the scouts, the GMs, and the owners. At the end of the day, none of them can predict what's going to happen. Um, everybody got their opinions, but they, the only thing that's matter, like I said, the people in the head office. If you're not there, then it doesn't even matter. Go ahead, Dan Wolkenstein, followed by Ryan John Parsons and Mark Brennan on deck. Hey, Micah, Dan Wolkenstein from the Brawl Network. How you doing? Good. Hey, quick question for you. So I got a, kind of a two-part question. I cover the Chargers out here in LA. Um, so first part, what are your thoughts on the Chargers? Have you connected with them yet? 
And then second part, I know versatility is key for your position, especially four, three, three, four. Uh, talk about your versatility in terms of playing a linebacker or potentially edge. Um, yeah, I've talked to Charles a couple of times over the phone and uh, with a Zoom meeting. Um, but, you know, my versatility is going to come in handy. I played DN growing up and uh, pretty much my whole life. So Pat, rushing the pass rush has never been a problem. And, you know, obviously what I showed at Penn State going side on side has never been a problem. And a lot of teams been talking about first and second down, uh, having to go side on sideline, third down, having to go get the quarterback. So I think I'm going to walk into a great position. I am John Parsons, followed by Mark. Hey, Mike, how are you? Good. Sorry. Um, have you talked to any teams or coaches today? And uh, if so, have any of them mentioned you playing other positions other than uh, linebacker in the NFL? Uh, yeah, I talked to the Dolphins and uh, the I, I pretty much every team, the Steelers, the Raiders. Um, you know, it's all been good and feedback. And uh, they uh, all pretty much got me as a backer. So uh realize that's when we play at the next level. Go to Mark Brennan, followed by Ryan Dunleavy. Hey, Mike, uh, uh, what was it like watching Penn State play last season? I have to imagine it was kind of tough. And how much communication did you stay um, in with the players and coaches as they were going through some tough times? I mean, obviously, they're my brother. So I, I talked to him more frequently, at least once or twice a week. Obviously, with Jesse, uh, a person I'm be in contact with forever, and Jason is checking on his progress, see how he's doing. So, and you know, it was tough seeing them guys go like that. But I think they're going to have a much better year and they're going to keep getting better. They was just young, not a lot of experience, but I think this year they're on the up and coming. Ryan Dunleavy next, next followed by uh, John Macaron. Hey, Mike, uh, part of this uh, evaluation is tape and the other part is character. How have you answered any team so far that have had questions about your character? How have you answered those? And uh, obviously, is that where LeVar Arrington comes in for you? Um, you know, uh, LeVar did vouch for my character. Obviously, people have concerns about things that came up. But at the end of the day, I believe that I was a kid. You know, I was 17, 18. We all made mistakes when we were 17, 18. Uh, I'm not going to let it control, dictate the person I am uh, now. You know, I'm not going to let something that was three or four years from now dictate of who I'm becoming and the father I want to be. You know, I'm, everyone's going to learn and grow. Uh, I'm pretty sure none of you are making the same mistakes when y'all were 17, 18, or even 25. And if someone's going to judge me over that, you know, I'd rather not be in their program. You know, I know what type of person I'm becoming. I know what type of father I'm becoming. And that's all that matters to me. So uh, anybody who's willing to accept my wrongs when I was wrong and accept my rights when I'm right, uh, I'm ready to go ahead and give them my all. But, you know, if it's going to come down to something that I did in high school or, you know, something I wish I could change, then, you know, I can only control what I control and what I do forward. So that's how I feel about it. We'll go to John next, followed by Pat at WGAL. Hey, Micah. I'm John Macaroon with SI All Lions. I cover the Detroit Lions. I'm just curious. I got two questions. Uh, one, have you had any meetings with the Detroit Lions? And two, what would it mean to play for a team that has a prominent member in the front office that played linebacker in Chris Spielman? Uh, you know, uh, I talked to the Lions a couple of times. I spoke with the coach again today. Uh, we had a great, great conversation. Um, you know, honestly, it, I'll be blessed to really go anywhere, you know, but obviously playing with Chris Spielman and things like that, someone who can enhance my game would be terrific for me. Someone who will help me learn and grow and, you know, push me to get better every day. And that's all I need. Thank you. Good luck in the draft process. Thank you. We'll go to Pat next, followed by Will hutchinson Hagler. Micah, how are you, my friend? I'm good. How you been, Pat? Nice to see you again. I got my COVID shot today, buddy. I'm ready to run 40. Hey, I need to get mine soon. <laughs> do that. Do that. Painless. Hey, you mentioned you've been working um, for this for the last like six months. What are you feeling now? I mean, is it relief? Is it pride? And what will it be like the next month as you wait for the draft? Um, you know, uh, it's a big relief. You know, I finally get to go home and be with my son and my family and finally get this weight of this day I've been praying for and telling you guys how I'm a do what I'm going to do and the expectations of me. And, you know, it's fine, like a lift off my shoulders. And now I can just 
finally relax and just, you know, look forward to this draft coming up because I'm excited, man. Uh, it's a it's an unbelievable feeling and an unbelievable truth that you know I fight for this and I finally get to experience it. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Next call by Alex Dimel. My bad, didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> how's it going, Micah? Good. Good, good. Um, just wondering today specifically, how was it just you know being back on campus, back around some of the guys, back around your old coaches like James and stuff? How, how was that overall? I just feel like it's always been family here. I've been coming here since my freshman year of high school, so it's like any other time. I was greeted with open arms, open love, nothing but love. And you know, being around these guys is great. Uh, seeing what they what what they want to accomplish this year, and I can't wait to see them do it, man. I, I love it here. This is like my second home, and I got like three dads up here that I can rely on, and I can always call up for any help. So, you know, it's beautiful. Micah, how are you? Thanks for taking the time. Of course. Um, how would you say, uh, you know, Coach? Franklin and your uh, defense or linebackers coach Brent Pry have prepared you for draft day just throughout your college career. I would just say, you know, Coach Pry always helped me to a high expectation, and so did Franklin. They always pushed me to get better. I believe that they saw what I could do before I even saw it. So, you know, obviously having that unbelievable confidence in me and you know pushing me every day, understanding and showing me my rights and wrongs, teaching me how to become not just a better player but a man, uh, really helped me change my character and. Uh, who I want to be and show me, you know, how to be a professional. Awesome. Thanks, man. Last question for Micah, uh, Art Stapleton. Hi, Micah. How you doing? Good. Um, I know, I know your relationship is pretty strong with uh, Sean Spencer. Uh, now with him being with the Giants, I don't know if you've had much contact uh, with them, but What's it been like, uh, your relationship now with Sean? you still talk to, to Chaos and, and keep that up? Yeah, uh, Coach Chaos, I talked to the Giants multiple times, finished talking to him here today. Um, you know, we got an unbelievable relationship. Coach Spence was one of the main guys that was recruiting me. So, you know, he always gives me a call every other week or, you know, lets me know how I'm checking on me. So, you know, having that relationship with him is tremendous. And even if he don't, if he don't coach me again, you know, I know I got a friend forever. So uh, I love that guy. Do you let that creep into your mind that it would be a possibility that he do again? Yeah, if I was able to coach for Coach Chaos again, it would be unbelievable. You know, that's like a, a older, it's like a big dad, but friend at the same time. And I know we might go bike riding together, so uh, <laughs> it would be fun. Thanks, man. Good luck. Thank you for your time, Micah. Yeah, of course. Thank you, guys.